Michael Gibson, a noted wood artist and also a member of the Chattahoochee Wood Turners, uh, entered a record, a recent record power promotional contest in the Masters category and won. And as a result, the club for the Masters category winds up getting this, this record power lathe, uh, an SC3 and an SC4 chuck, every um, a dust collector system, which I'm not going to show, and every set of jaws made uh, by record, record power. I want to go over the features of this record power Carnet Herald lathe. Uh, it is not yet introduced into the U.S., but it is available in Europe. In Europe, it's a 220 model, and, uh, and it has an M33 uh, thread. In, for the U.S. model that we received, it is a 110 horsepower, and the spindle size is the 1 inch by 8, which is just really common to uh, uh, small and, and mid-size mid -size lathes. When you go to looking at lathes, they basically come into, you might say, small, medium, and large, but generally we call those mini lathes, which are typically 10 inches and smaller. Some people might include the 12 inches as a mini lathe, uh, such as these uh, jets that we have at the club, uh, which are 10 and 12 inches. The mini lathe, which is be like this uh, record, record power Carnet Herald, which is a 14 inch, which is, there's not a, a lot of lathes in that category, and then generally, uh, full-size lathes are 16 inches and larger, such as a Jet 1642 or this large 3520 Powermatic here at the club. So let's look at the features of this, uh, this record power uh, lathe. It comes with a, uh, a spur drive, it comes with a, a live center, it comes with a uh, face plate. I've got them both shown here because you see that in pictures. It's not clear to me why anybody would ever use them both together. Uh, this is a 14-inch uh, uh, swing, which means you can turn it up to a 14-inch size uh, bowl. Uh, so it's 7 inches from the center to the bottom. It's uh, got 20 inches between centers, so when you move the tailstock out, when you put a piece of wood in here, you can get a piece 20 inches long. And you can extend that with an optional uh, bed, a bed extension that uh, clamps on the end that, that will add an extra 16 inches. So you could go up to a 36 inch piece of wood for something large like a baseball bat or a, uh, a baluster or, or a table, table leg. Let's talk about the, uh, the motor. This has got a one horsepower uh, DC motor with electronic controls. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's reversing. This has a, a considerable amount of uh, torque uh, because it uses a three pulley adjustment system. So. Uh, you set which pulley you use, whether it's one, two, or three. Let me give you some idea of, of what the impact of that, that is. If you're in pulley one position, you get a lot of torque if you're turning bowls because the speed is from 95 to, uh, to 1,055. The middle range, which is probably what most people will use most of the time, I expect we'll probably keep it on, on that here at the club, from 140 to 1868. And then it's got a high speed of from 290 to 3890 when you use that, that last uh, pulley system. The pulley cover fastens with a, a screw. You take this out with a, with a Phillips and there you can see the, the three belt adjustments for. Uh, you can also see the 24 index uh, marks. Uh, it weighs uh, 105 pounds or 48 uh, kilograms for those uh, folks outside the U.S. Uh, the banjo, it's got an 8 inch uh, tool rest. It's got a locking banjo with, with a cam lock system which is very nice. It's very secure. Uh, let's talk about the tool rest. One of the nice features, it's got an 8 inch uh, tool rest but it uses a 1 inch post the same as most uh, large size lathes and that compares to say the 5 8 inch post for uh, generally for mini lays such as the 10 and, and, tw and 12 inch. Uh, it's got a locking position on both the side and the front so if, if the front interferes with, with your uh, locking lever you can set it on the side which is a nice feature that uh, very few mini lays have it's, but it's fairly common on larger, larger lays. Spindle has three sets of uh, bearings uh, it uses a Morse, Morse taper with a knockout bar that comes with it to remove the uh, four spur drive that comes with it. Uh, uh, there's a very nice spindle lock which is also part of the indexing system I believe. 
The, the 24 pin indexing system, you have a nice window here so you can actually see the numbers for indexing. So this is about one of the few indexing systems I've seen on lathe that looks like it actually could, uh, could work. Uh, as I say, Morse taper too, common to almost all modern, modern lathes. Uh, on the tailstock, it also uses a, a Morse taper with the live center that comes with it. Uh, unlike most lathes that have self-ejecting by just uh, uh, retracting the wheel, this one does, does require the use of a, of a knockout bar. It has a, two and, a 60 millimeter uh, quill travel distance, which is approximately 2 and 3 eighths inch U.S. Uh, it, it's, it's etched in, uh, in millimeters. Uh, to show the, 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 the distance that uh, it can be uh, uh, projected. Okay, this is, comes with a one horsepower motor. Uh, it's a DC motor with, with this uh, variable speed controller. One of the nice features it has here is it's got a powered lock, uh, lockout switch, so you don't have to unplug it. If you can actually switch this and it will actually disconnect the power uh, to the variable speed uh, controller here. Uh, it's got an instant off uh, button that we're used to seeing on, on larger lays, but you don't see on, on many lays. Uh, one of the, the things on this control, you have to set the belt setting for either belt number the low, medium, or high to get your correct readout, but it only takes clicking on it to, once you change the belt pulley to uh, set that belt ratio. Uh, it does have a reverse switch. You just simply have to hold it down while it's blinking until it quits blinking and then it'll actually run in in reverse. This on, this on. So now we turn the lathe on by pushing the on button and you can see it's uh, actually running in reverse. And we'll turn it off. When you turn it off a uh, safety feature is it will, uh, when you start it back on, it will turn off the reverse and go back into forward position. Has a nice hand wheel. I've gotten used to it. There are a few lathes that don't come with hand wheels, or the hand wheel is an optional accessory, uh, but that's, a, that's also a nice feature on this lathe. Uh, the fit and finish of this is, is very nicely done. Uh, the machining is very good. You don't have uh, uh, cast flashings uh, that, that's going to catch you or grab you. Uh, the, the paint finish is, is very nice. I'm very, very pleased with the, uh, the overall the build quality of, of this. It does come with, uh, the, the tubular legs are an optional feature. Uh, it comes with rubber mounts, which we chose not to use because we're going to wind up putting casters on this to make it easier to move it around. Uh, if you're going to mount this lathe on a workbench and not use the optional uh, legs, you can buy these, uh, this option uh, feet set that mounts underneath the lathe and allows you to then mount this permanently onto a, a workbench. Otherwise, you don't have a way of mounting this lathe on a workbench without this, this option. This option also can be used to, with the optional feet to actually raise the height uh, of the lathe if you were a, a tall wood turner. And it, it's designed to go between the lathe and these extension legs as well. Uh, one nice feature about these optional legs is you can fill them uh, with sand to make this even more uh, heavier uh, and, and, and reduce possible vibration on, on oversized or out of balance uh, pieces. One of the nice features about this, this lathe that you don't see, as far as I know, on any, any mini lathe that I've seen is the sliding headstock. You use the knockout bar to loosen it, and then you can slide this down. And so that allows you to uh, actually turn from the end of the lathe, which is more ergonomical, similar to the way you would on a Jet 1642 or a Powermatic. So that's a nice, a, a nice feature. It also, uh, which I think people in the U.S. don't tend to use too much because uh, very few U.S. designed lathes uh, have this feature, is you can uh, actually uh, swivel the head. By just twisting it around, it has a detent so it, it clicks into position. But by swiveling the head, 
you can actually turn a larger a larger piece and you can turn it all the way around and there is an optional outrigger for the tool rest that allows you to get the tool rest uh, even even closer so we're digging through our box of stuff I found out we they actually supplied us with this optional outrigger so here's an example of how you use this uh, outrigger with the uh, headstock uh, swiveled off for larger work this would be especially good for doing large large platters by using this outrigger extension my club has several uh, 10 inch and 12 inch uh, lasers shown here in this picture and I know this record power 14 inch with a one horsepower motor and variable speed is going to be a real welcome addition to our our shop as well as the uh, the SC3 and the SC4 chucks I own the SC3 uh, and S3, SC4 uh, chucks and I really like them a lot. I did a video on both those chucks. If you're interested in that video review, just click on the link, uh, link below. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.